Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my updated prayer plant collection video. So I'm going to include in this video all of my plants that are kind of in that prayer plant category. So that includes my Calathea, my Maranta, my Stromanthe, my Satanthe. I think that's all. I don't think I've got any other categories. So yeah, it's going to include all of those. So it's mostly just going to be an update, I guess, of what plants I had from my last Calathea video, which I'll pop up at the top. I pretty much think I had most or all of these plants in that video. If not, one or two might be different. So it's kind of going to be an update to how they are doing since you guys last saw them. Some of them might actually be completely new plants from when you last saw them. Because yeah, I have killed killed a few. I also gave a few away before I moved and then I've repurchased since moving since I've got more space to keep them now. Okay, before you started, I just wanted to go through care tips for prayer plants. I know that I see questions about it all the time on Facebook and online about how to care for them. Lots of people have different ways that they care for them. I'm just going to tell you what I personally do and what works for me. My advice is pretty much like the complete opposite of what most people say for prayer plants, but since doing it my way, I pretty much haven't had any casualties and I hardly get any browning tips on any of my prayer plants either so yeah I think for me what I'm doing it works really well for me so the first thing is light so prayer plants can tolerate low light in my old flat I did have a few prayer plants in very low light conditions like one of them pretty much got zero light <laughs> and yeah like it didn't die I will say that but it also didn't grow like I'd probably get one leaf a year if they hit, if I was lucky. I can definitely tolerate the low light, but if you want them to be growing, getting really lush and beautiful, then you probably want to give them a little bit more light than that. I find that medium to bright and direct light works really well from them. Definitely not direct light. They're kind of shade plants, so they prefer yeah, to have like more filtered or dappled light than anything direct, which is probably just going to burn their leaves. I do find that they do like more light though, like they definitely grow faster when they have medium to bright light, but like I said, you can, they do tolerate the low light, they just don't really grow. It just kind of depends on whether you want them to be thriving or just be alive. <laughs> cool, next is humidity. So these guys really do love humidity. I used to keep them in my bathroom at my old place, like pretty much all of my, most of my prayer plants lived in my bathroom at our old flat so that they got the extra humidity. I don't actually in this house have any of them in any rooms that have particularly high humidity. None of them are in my plant room which gets like average of 70% humidity and to be honest they don't really get that much humidity but I did find in my old place when they didn't have much light that the humidity really helped them. So yeah it's a bit of a tricky one. I haven't done any extra steps to make the area more humid humid for them but they're all absolutely fine so yeah and I, I don't miss plants I know a lot of people do like to do that but I just don't because it can actually cause fungal infections if the water's sitting on the leaves for too long or it drips into the middle where it's not drying out then that's when you quite often get a fungal infection so that's why I don't miss plus it only boosts the humidity for like 10 20 seconds so it's kind of pointless but I think that's because they're getting like the other things that they need. They're getting the light, the water that they need. Um, and that's really helping a lot. Next is light temperature. So Calatheas are tropical plants, so they do really like a warm environment. Generally the rule is that Calathea don't like, or prayer plants don't like to have too much draft. So avoiding keeping them in like say a doorway that opens and shuts a lot. To be honest I've not really had any issues with temperature for my prey plants. I mean they got quite cold in winter time but they kind of just adapted to it and were fine. They're a bit sulky when we first moved in and then they kind of got used to it but they do definitely love the heat so that does help um, to make them happy and make them grow faster. They just kind of I guess slow down in the cooler 
the cooler months. Watering, so for me, watering has been the biggest difference that I have found for my pre-plants. So when I first got pre-plants, I did what everyone recommended, which was to keep the pre-plants moist. And that just didn't work for me. Like, it still doesn't work for me. I would just have so many pre-plants getting root raw and just, yeah, like getting hideous browning, super like, just, yeah, it just didn't work for me at all. So I was like, okay, what do I do? What if I just treat them like all my other plants and I let them dry out between watering? And that's what I have been doing for the last like two, two years, maybe two. Yeah, like at least the last two years. Not had any issues with it. Like they are just so happy. I kind of wait until they get to a point where I can see that they're thirsty. So they're a little bit droopy. Their leaves might kind of curl a little bit. And that's usually when I will water them. So then I know, okay, they're thirsty, it's time to give them, and then I'll give them a good water. And since I've been doing that, I've not had any color fair casualties, hardly get any crisping on the leaves. To be honest, the only time I really get crispy leaves is when they get quite thirsty and I leave them for too long. So with this technique, you just wanna make sure that once they're dry, you water them, you don't let them dry out and then wait a few more days which I do for some of my plants like my Hoyas in winter time when I notice that the, um, that the soil's dried out I'll just wait a couple more days before I water them just to be on the safe side but for pre-plants I definitely do, don't do that as soon as I see like its leaves are curling or it's starting to get droopy and I can see that it's thirsty then I'll just water it straight away I won't let it like wait a day or two before I then give it some water and if I do wait a day or two that's normally when I get the crispy leaves um, for my pre-plants, another thing is, to be honest, I haven't really experimented with this. I've just always watered my pre-plants with either rainwater or filtered water. I hardly ever use filtered water now because we have a rain collection kind of set up. So we've got, <laughs> we've got some buckets which are used, but we also have a huge water drum that collects rain off of the roof and it goes straight in there and that's pretty much always full all year round. So I just, if I don't have any rainwater in any buckets because it hasn't rained recently, then I'll just use that water, which is just rainwater as well. So yeah, I pretty much always water them with rainwater. Um, that's just because apparently Calathea and prep plants, they don't like any like weird chemicals in the water. I haven't really experimented with just watering them with normal water to see if that's actually true or not. I just, I have the water there so I just use it. But yeah, supposedly if you not use normal tap water then that can help, then that can contribute to more crispy tips. So yeah, I think that's pretty much all of my tips. Okie dokie, let's start. So we'll start with my OG. This is my OG rattlesnake or Calathea lancifolia. I love her. So I say she's my OG because this was one of, this is one of the first plants I ever owned. So I'll just pop her here so you can see her nice and good. So yeah, Calathea rattlesnake. This is actually one of the plants that started my obsession with plants to begin with. Yeah, one day, like, I don't even know how long I've been into plants now, three, four years. Anyway, one day I just saw this plant in a shop and I really was like, wow, that is so unique and cool. And I didn't know that indoor plants could be that, like, cool. <laughs> and I thought about it for weeks and weeks and then eventually I went back and I got it. And then after that I kind of started to get into plants. But yeah, she kind of just sparked it all for me. So I have had the worst time with her. I don't even know what she was looking like last time you saw her. She has started to grow a little bit faster now. When I had her in my old house, this is one of the plants that I said was just like, she basically got no light. I got like one leaf a year. I'm getting a few more. I've had probably three or four leaves since I bought her to this house. I actually um, bought another one and planted it in with her because she was looking pretty like thin and not very bushy and full so I got another one to add in just to make her look a little bit bushier and less sad. Yeah she did not like me at all when I first got her like lost so many leaves. As soon as I started waiting for her to dry up before watering she's been happy as since and like as you can see pretty much hardly any crispy leaves like there's a little a few little bits 
a little bit crispy but like it was like the whole leaf would go brown or it would get like these big marks like around the edges that took up almost the whole leaf of like crispiness so yeah she's doing really well and yeah I'll always have the Calathea rattlesnake in my collection I think because she's just she's just so unique like super underrated I think Okay, next you have seen her before and this is my OG one still. This is my Stramanthi Trio Star. She's doing really well. She is going to need a water soon. So this is kind of what I was saying. So if you can see this leaf, it is kind of, it's not super flat. It's starting to fold inwards. So that is my sign that she's going to need a water. So not all of them are doing that yet. So I'll probably water her tomorrow. But yeah, she's doing so well. As you can see, she's getting huge. She's starting to mature a bit. Like, her leaves are getting a lot bigger. Um, I used to get quite small leaves. Like, this was probably the size. And now they're kind of, like, maybe double the size now. So that she's definitely starting to mature. So this one, I love her so much. She's one of my all-time favorite plants that I own. Just the variegation is so cool. The colors. I love pink. Like, I just love her so much. She lives in my bedroom, right beside me on my side table. On my side table, because I wanted her close to me at all the time, at all times. And she does get quite a good amount of light, but the room is quite bright. I had to actually put sheer curtains in because it was too bright. Like, it was direct sunlight, so now it's indirect. It's probably due for a repot. I've actually had to repot her like three or four times already since I've got her. But yeah, she's doing really well. So yeah, I love her. She is just amazing. I find her super, super chill. Like super easy care. And she's never had extra humidity. And she used to sit right beside a door. So she did used to get drafts. And yeah, she's just always been happy. Like I've never had a single, a single issue with her since I got her. To me, she's like one of my easiest plants to look after. I just see the curl and I'm like, cool, water. And that's it. <laughs> cool, the next plant is this guy. It is a Calathea Freddy. I cannot remember for the life of me if I had one of these last time. I feel like I did because my first Calathea Freddy, I got it from the first Tauranga plant festival that I went to with my friend Chantal. And I'm pretty sure I had a Calathea Freddy last time. It was probably a bit smaller than this. This is a new one, I actually just bought it yesterday because I was running out of room at my old flat so I ended up salt selling my other one which I was real gutted about because I really like Calathea Freddy. So now I have the space, I was like, yes, and there was a sale yesterday so I was like, perfect, get me my Calathea Freddy. I've just been waiting to find one that was quite bushy, like lately they've been really like small and not, not that nice so... Anyway, I found one yesterday that is looking really nice and lush. So here she is. There we go. I don't know what it is about them. She's just like really subtly beautiful. I think it's just like the leaves look really dainty. The pattern is like quite simple but still nice. I don't know. I just really like Kelsey Freddy. I also find them super easy to look after as well and yeah I was just like really missing having one in my collection. Okay next I've got this guy is my Maranta Ooh, what is it Maranta Silver Band I believe. Let's just have a look up here up close. This is one of my favorite plants like it's just so pretty. Oh look at that leaf. Ooh. These guys are real confusing. There's like two types of Maranta and they look very similar. There's Maranta Silver Band and Maranta Silver Stripe. And I'm pretty sure this one is Maranta Silver Stripe. And the Maranta Silver Band is the one that's really difficult to get in New Zealand. But these ones you can get from just the plant store. They used to be really rare but now they are quite common and yeah I just love it it's just so nice and again I just water it when it's dry and that's pretty much it this guy actually gets like not that much light but it's doing really well like it's growing so good there's actually two plants in here this is one of the one thing one of the plants where I just bought another one and added it to it because I was tired of waiting for it to get fuller um so she's looking really nice at the moment and I am so stoked 
with her. I just wish I could remember which one it is. I'm pretty sure it's Silver Stripe. Whatever name I put down below is should be the correct one because I will have made sure it was that one before I gave it a name. Okay, next is another, I would say OG, but this is my second one, is my Satanthi and Magris. She is so cute. So this girl actually lives in my office at work, but I love her. Isn't she adorable? So I used to have one of these and it would have been in my last collection video, but I ended up selling it because again, I didn't have enough room and I really regretted it because I have always really liked my Satanthia McGriff. My old one, I had it for such a long time and it was just always so carefree and chill and yeah so recently I got another one because I was like oh, I just really missed it so yeah this is my work one she is just so cute I love how bushy these are the leaves are so cute they're just like small and oval and they don't really get much bigger than that at least not that I've seen anyways they have the purple backs on the leaves as well and yeah I've just always found these super easy to care for again they kind of curl a bit when they're thirsty and that's when I water it and I just love having her in my office at work I should also mention that I've put all of my color them or whatever into um clear pots by the way so that I can also keep an eye on when the soil is too dry so yeah all the ones in the terracotta that you've been seeing they're actually in a clear pot and the terracotta is just a cover pot just FYI because yeah terracotta does dry plants out quite fast and it's probably not the greatest for prayer plants because like I said I try not to like let them get too dry like it's just like get dry then I water them but I don't let them get dry and wait and then water them so yeah they probably would dry out just too soon and not really appreciate it if they were in terracotta Next, this guy would have been in my last video, but probably not as big. This is my Calathea Macquiana. Oh, how do I hold it so you can see it without tipping the soil? Okay, there we go. She looks stunning. This plant had no light in my old house, but she always did really well with it. Like, this is one of the plants that I was talking about at the start. She never, she never died at my old house. She just didn't really put out any leaves, like, ever. Um, so she really appreciates having more light in this new house. She's putting out new leaves finally, which is great. I actually have two Maquianas in here because I did the whole thing where I put another one in to make it fuller. Um, but it has new leaves, like this is a new leaf. Um, this is a new leaf. So yeah, it's definitely growing. I can see new leaves coming in. So yeah, she's just stunning, like one of my favourite Calatheas, like just how cool is the patterning? But yeah, I've always found this Calathea in particular to be really easy care and chill, like she's tolerated so much and never died on me, so yeah, she is just beautiful. I love, 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 love my, my queen. Next, this is another bit of an OG and again, love so much, like again, one of my favourite plants. Um, but so underrated. This is my Maranta Lacunura slash Rabbit's Foot. Oh, isn't she beautiful? Let's just brighten her up and have a look. You did see her in my old video. She was very lanky in that old video. Oh my gosh. I, yeah, she was looking not the best. She's looking so much better now. I ended up cutting her up, like completely cutting her up and repropagating her and putting it back into the pot. She's looking really good, but recently I still went in the shop and I, I added another one. So anyway, there's two in there now, my original and then another one. Um, just to give her that extra fullness that I really love. And she's doing so well. Like, I just love it. The leaves are super thin and I just, I don't know, like they're not, they're not like a lot of other leaves. They're real thin and they also are super like, I don't know, they're not glossy, they're like matte. And she's just amazing. Uh, the best time of the year is when we kind of just go between, like when we just start spring. I normally find that she, new, she puts out new leaves and they're like so pretty. They start off really 
purple and then they kind of just um fade back into this normal kind of this greeny kind of color but like i just love when she puts out new leaves because they always look really nice she sits on our coffee table pride of place in the lounge because i love her so much next is my calathea musaica she is again beautiful I can't remember if I had one in the last video. If I did, it was probably like a one or two leaf cutting. It would have been tiny um, because these used to be really rare. They're now common as like you can get them in pretty much every plant store. I think she's got two plants in her as well to get this like nice fullness because I just can't be bothered waiting for it. Um, yeah, so anyway, she looks beautiful. Love her. So yeah, it's this Calathea Musaica or sometimes called Calathea Network. Man, I remember when I bought for $120 one leaf. Like, it was one node. And now you can get a full plant for like $30 from any plant store. It's crazy. But anyway, I'm so glad that they released her because she is so stunning. And I also find her super easy care. Again, I just water her when she's dry. And as you can see, she's pretty much got no crispy leaves, if any. Um, it's real funny though, you can tell which are like leaves from my OG Musaica because they still have toothpaste on it, can you see? Because she used to sit on my sink at our old place and I used to always get toothpaste on her and I could never get the toothpaste off. Longa gets toothpaste on her, which I'm sure she's very happy about. Oh, and my last colour fair, um, you saw this recently, this was in my plant project video. It is my Calathea Orbifolia. As you can see, I haven't killed her yet. It's been like, what, a month or two maybe? So, so far, so good. She has not died. She's still alive. I put her in my office, just on the desk near the window so she gets filtered bright light. I feel like that Orbifolia, uh, one of the Calatheas that doesn't really appreciate low light i always had kept them in quite low light in the past and they've never done well so i thought this time i'll try her in more light and see if she's happier so far so good Still, you know alive so yeah that's good and i love the pot still i still think it's such a cute pot yeah love color feel before these guys can get huge i don't know if you know but like their leaves can get so big um, but yeah, like I said, she's doing really well. Again, I put her in a clay pot so I can keep an eye on the roots this time. Make sure I don't overwater. She's actually got a new leaf coming in, I can see. So yeah, this is my colour fetal pear folder. Not dead yet, so let's hope that continues. Fingers crossed. Okay, my last pre-plant, I can't be bothered going and getting her because she's just too big and heavy and I just can't deal with it. It's too hot. <laughs> so I'll just pop a photo here. It is my Anthea Oppenheimer tricolor. So you guys saw her in my last video. She's looking way different. So when I bought her here, I decided to keep it outside to see how she goes. Honestly, she got completely burnt, like so sunburnt. All the leaves were brown and like... So bad so I cut heaps of them off and within like the last pretty much cut all of them off to be honest and I was like okay we'll just start again um, and look how many leaves she has now she's doing so much better so all of those new leaves have grown within probably the last month maybe when I last cut her and it's, she's not getting burned anymore so she's kind of yeah she's like adjusted to the sunlight out there she's not like in direct sun or anything like that she's right up against our front door and we've got a large like um we've got a large deck and like roof over that so she's kind of uh, so she's not like right out in the sunshine but she definitely does get a bit of direct sunlight so far she's doing really well so i'm really stoked because she, she was like one of my first, apart from my, I got my rattlesnake, my Satanthi Amigris, and my Satanthi Tricolor. They were like my three original OG prayer plants that I've had like this whole time pretty much, apart from my Amigris, which I got rid of. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is she's doing really well. I'm really happy. Um, yeah, because I would like her to live permanently outside because she's so big and like she can handle it so yeah i'm really stoked so yeah that's here 
Okie dokie, that is the end of that video. I am actually really relieved because I'm so hot. I need to go have some water and sit in front of the heat pump now. But anyway, that is all my pre-plants. That's my updated video so you can see how they're all doing. I think last time I had a Sabrina. <sighs> I give up on those like I've had like two or three I, I might try again but hmm, I'm not sure like she just just always every time I've had a Calafia or Zabrina they've just not done well so I'll think about it um but other than that I think oh, I might have had a Calafia Vitata as well I haven't actually seen them for sale in such a long time so if I do see one I might grab one so hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time bye